what's up guys it's two bricks and today i have a different kind of video for you guys and i'm in a different space which is why i sound odd compared to my usual videos uh, i'm going to be doing a full walkthrough of how to build a model in studio and then break it down into instructions um, uh, because that's something that i think uh, is really useful for a lot of folks to know who are in the custom lego community and who want to be able to do this themselves but are maybe a little bit daunted uh, looking at this software because you know, there's quite a lot going on, especially if you're not super computer savvy. Um, there might be a lot of stuff in here that might confuse you. So I just thought since I'm going to go ahead and spend today breaking down a, a particular model that I was going to make anyway, you can kind of see the file name here, the power loader from uh, Aliens, which is a, a separate video that I have uh, detailing that model on my channel. Uh, so I just thought since I'm going to do it anyway, I may as well record the process and let you guys see uh, start to finish how to tackle uh, a small model, but that has a fair amount of complexity and interesting things, um, and just kind of how to organize and th uh, organize your thoughts and your process to make the instruction making process go really smoothly, uh, and just can, uh, give you a full kind of beginning to end breakdown of how to use the software. So I'm really excited. Uh, let's get in and take a look at how we do this. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the program uh, and how to use it, so that we can start uh, diving in and making some models. So Pretty much um, all of your actual assembling of bricks will be done with your left mouse button. So you're gonna just click on a brick that you want from down here in the palette. And you're gonna bring it up here and you're gonna place it wherever you want. Again, just click with your left mouse. Then when you're done, so you can just keep placing the same brick. Or, and when you're done, you just hit right click to stop, uh, to deselect that current um, brick that you're using. So um, to actually move around the scene, you're gonna be using your right mouse button to rotate the scene around or to tumble. Then you're going to be using your middle mouse button to scroll to zoom in and out. And then you're going to hold down the middle mouse button to pan left, right, up and down. And so with those three combined, you can move around your model with ease. So really easy, simple navigation, no additional buttons required. Um, up here we have a bunch of different um, options and things which will come in handy later. I'll be going through all of those as I build. Um, and then down here we have the kind of brick palette and that shows you all of the different bricks that you have access to um, but handily it's broken down here into menus and sub menus so it makes it a little bit easier to navigate around if you have some idea of the part that you're looking for um, you can just kind of if you know it's roughly a slope or say a curved slope you can go in here and it kind of uh, jumps you to that part of the list and it makes it a little bit quick, quicker to navigate around and get the parts that you want. You can also search for parts in here, which is uh, what I do, for example, whenever I want to bring up an ingot, I always forget where those are stored, so I just type ingot, and it uh, kind of highlights that area and cuts everything else out and then shows you the piece that you're looking for right here. It's not the most reliable thing, um, but you know, say if you're looking for something vaguely hose-like um, and you're not quite sure, you can see all the different things tagged as having anything to do with hoses in here, for example. Um, so that's a, a fairly handy little feature that, uh, especially if you're newer to the software and you don't quite know all the layout yet, um, that's something that can help you kind of uh, eliminate some of that scrolling is to just have a stab at searching for it. Uh, you know, you could search for uh, windscreen, for example, and uh, it kind of updates as you type. So you can, uh, you can see in here. So um, that's really cool. Uh, to get back to the main uh, menu here, to actually see all of the parts that are available, you'll want to just uh, X out of the search here because as soon as you stop typing, you know, it'll it'll zoom in on, on just that and you won't see the rest of your stuff. Uh, so over here we have on the right the step counter. Um, that's something that's very, very important to the way that you think about and the way that you lay out your model with respect to making the instructions. So I'll be going through that in detail when we get into it. Um, this uh, These little buttons down here have a couple of handy little functions. Um, I forgot to mention those before we move on. So right here we have the uh, turn on or off decorated elements. So when I turn that off, you can see here if I scroll down the bricks, we don't see anything with patterns on. If I turn that back on, it just loads up all of the different decorated elements that uh, Studio has within its inventory. So you can see here there's uh, some Harry Potter designs, some eyeballs, uh, popcorn, things of that sort. So anything that's um, that you're looking for this kind of a printed piece. Uh, hopefully, if it is in here, they will show up when you um, check this on. So by default, I like to leave that off because it just, uh, you know, clutters up the work environment when uh, when you don't need a particular stickered element and those are fairly rare in your building. So that's that. And then you can also display the bricks that are available down here 
by a certain color. So uh, say if I'm building, like uh, today, I'm going to be building a fairly yellowish item. So I'm going to scroll down to yellow. And then all my bricks will, by default, as I place them in the scene, will be yellow. So that's really handy, and it's a quick way to um, save yourself a little bit of time from picking and recoloring all of the parts individually. So when I, if I place a brick and I don't want it to be yellow, I select that brick and I go up here to the color palette, and then I'm just going to pull down and select what color I actually do want the brick to be. So I can change it right there, and then it will keep track. Um, you can see here in this little, just placing a couple of bricks here. You can see in the content colors um, menu or sub section here, uh, it will keep track of all of the colors that are currently being used in your scene, so you can easily just jump between them. So say if I um, grab this part right here, I just want to quickly color it yellow without having to go through this whole sub-menu down here. I can just grab that and I can just click it. And now you'll see the turquoise has disappeared because I'm only using yellow currently in my build. So that's a really handy uh, way of kind of navigating around and seeing the colors that you have available and jumping to them. Um, you know, having that at your fingertips is really handy. Uh, that's kind of all the main stuff that I wanted to go through. Uh, before we actually get into the building process. I know it's a very quick high-level overview, um, but that's really basically all you need to know for now. And um, and that's kind of the main, this is the main area that you'll be using when you're assembling your models. And then later on, we're gonna switch over to the instruction tab up here. Um, so, that, you know, we'll get into that later in the video. So for now, uh, let's just start placing some elements. Okay, so we're gonna start assembling our model now. And I have uh, in front of me here in the real world, I have my model that I'm gonna be breaking down. And I've kind of broken it into chunks, and I'm thinking about it in terms of the build experience and how I want the uh, the order of operations to be when folks actually go ahead and assemble this model. Um, and that's going to be hugely important to the whole process here of making the instructions. So uh, what I'm going to do is start the way that I would start any project, and I'm just going to pick the first element. So I know that I need a brick modified, and I'm going to be uh, getting this um, uh, handy-dandy bricks on three sides, or studs on three sides, brick here. And so you can see I'm just placing two of these in the scene because that is the first element that I need. And um, you know, for my uh, kind of main chassis here, that's gonna be the central frame of the build. Um, and so what, uh, what I was just doing there is I was using the arrow keys left and right to turn this around and you can use up and down to flip it um, any which way that you want. So that's how you orient your bricks uh, before you place them down in, this, in the um, building area here. And then, so when you wanna uh, place a brick, you click on the icon here within the palette, you bring it over to the area and you just kind of uh, hover over until it gets to roughly where you want it to be. And you click once and you still have that kind of selection. Um, you know, you, because that, that brick is still selected, it's gonna just continue to place these every time you left click. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of building a sponge over here, I guess. So uh, to get rid of that, you right click, and then that will deselect the current part that you have. And you can just click and drag over these and delete them. I actually don't need this one either. So um, I just need these two bricks to start with. Haha, -ha, two bricks, that's my name. Um, but I'm actually going to swap things around a little bit here because I'm thinking about the building order once again um, of how I want people to uh, be approaching this and so I want them to place this brick first and then this one second and this one actually needs to be black So I'm going to go ahead up here to my color tab and color this one black So uh, this is the beginning part right here. So this will be step one and that's what we see right here step one so I'm gonna go ahead and add a step so that for step two we can begin um, Assembling the next part and you're thinking about this as if you're looking at actual Lego instructions, step one literally would be the first step in this instruction process. Step two is the next part. So I'm gonna go down to my slopes right here and I'm gonna grab one of these handy dandy little guys here. And so um, I'm just looking at the actual um, model in front of me and I'm just literally copying, finding the pieces that I need within the, uh, the palette here and then I'm just bringing them in exactly as you would expect. Um, so I have this tile, which needs to go onto the back of this piece right here. So for step two, I have now these two slopes and this tile. And I know that that's uh, all that I want to place for step two, so I'm going to move on to step three. So um, the steps here, if you want to change the ordering of certain parts, you can click and you can drag them uh, from one step to another. So you can see right there, I just moved that slope into step one. Uh, and if it gets confusing and you want to know 
uh, what did the model look like? Say you're on step 200, right? And you want to know, um, wait, back here, you know, way, way, way back, how did the model look at that certain time? You can click on this little um, 3D glasses looking icon here, which is the step view, and that will hide everything uh, that was not present in the model up until that point. So now I can only see the bricks from step one, I can see step two, and so on and so on. So if you had like, like I said, step 200, and you click on 150, you'll see the model as it exists up to that point. So that's a really, really useful feature. I do tend to leave that off for the most part though, because I'm keeping an eye on my organization in here and I'm thinking about each step as I go. So I don't tend to need to use that that much, but it is really handy um, for certain circumstances. And I'm sure I'll need it before this video is over. So we'll take a look. Um, okay, so for step three, I know that I want to place some plates. So I have a one by two plate in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate that. Um, and also, sorry, I should mention, the uh, the use of the arrow keys is actually kind of camera dependent. So if I'm over here and I hit the down arrow, I get this motion with the plate, right? But if I'm over here and I hit the down arrow, I get this motion with the plate. So what you have to do is kind of think about the orientation of your piece in the camera view right here in this building area and then use the arrow keys as appropriate to orient the piece uh, in the direction that you need it to be. So that's something that uh, takes a little bit of getting used to. And um, <laughs> initially I was definitely tumbling things a lot of times before I got it to exactly how I want it to be. Um, and that's just one of those things. So um, yeah, it does take some getting used to, but um, so does everything in this program, <laughs> I'm afraid. Um, so the other piece that I need is one of these tile modified right here. I'm going to go ahead and place it. That took me more uh, more tumbles than I uh, than I probably should have for somebody who's used this program as much as I have. Uh, so that's step three taken care of, and now we'll go into step four. Uh, and I'm going to place a couple of of these brick modifieds in here with the studs on two sides. And I'm going to place those. Actually, do I want the two sides? No, I don't. Scratch that. I want the brick with one side. So that's this one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and place one with the stud facing out that way and one with the stud facing in this way. Right click to get out of that. So now uh, I have to recolor these parts black, so I just select them. So I select the first one and then I hold down command to select the second one and then I color it black. So again, really handy in here having the content colors saved uh, so that I can just access that really quickly. And um, I think that's all I'm going to do for step four, so let me go on to step five. I'm going to bring up some plates here. I need my regular one by two plates. Now, do pay attention when you're selecting uh, plates in here. You see how this says plate one by two, and then this looks the same, but it says plate one by two WI. That you can hover over it and it'll let you know the full name here. So this is plate one by two with bottom pin. So this is a different mold to the one that we normally would use. So I'll just show you as an example here. So this is the standard Lego part on the right, and this is a very old and specific design on the left that was used for things, I think, in the 90s. And if you go ahead and place that in your model, you'll see here that uh, the estimated price count for one of these is 14 cents per piece. The estimated uh, price for one of these is uh, 0.04, so uh, 4 cents uh, compared to 14 for this. So Obviously, you don't want to be using weird old molds for your uh, parts. You want to be using the most current or most common types. Um, and so when you're selecting your parts in here, do be careful that you're not getting a specific one that is weird. So uh, a good example also would be in the bricks category. There's the regular one by two brick, and then there's this one that has no inside studs. And this is used for, um, for transparent pieces. Uh, Lego has the specific mold for the transparent bricks so that you don't see all of that junk on the inside, but you don't want to be using that for your regular uh, operations here. Um, you know, that's gonna mess things up. Uh, so yeah, just usually the most current or most common one tends to be the one furthest to the left, uh, but there are some cases where you just have to kind of learn the placement of the things um, over time and you just kind of get used to it. Uh, but you can also hide um, certain bricks that you don't want to ever use. Like I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to ever have that piece selected. So I can just go ahead and hide it. There you go. And then, okay, sorry. This this program does get stuck sometimes. Um, and then in, if you want to bring back uh, that part, 
There is a palette for hidden bricks, but I have actually forgotten where it is right now because I never, <laughs> I never actually tend to use it. Um, if I had something, I wanted to stay hid. Um, but I will look that up and I'll find it later on and I'll show it to you guys. Um, but yeah, there are so so many palettes in here. You can see with all the different bricks and things. I think honestly, of all the um, of all the stuff in this program that's that's tricky to get used to, finding where all the bricks are is probably the the main um, tricky thing. Yeah, so, see, they have this whole new section in here for Belleville and Scala and Fabuland and all these really old retired things. So it's really cool. Uh, okay, so moving on. So I want these two plates under here to be black. Um, usually the way that I determine what goes into a single step is for this particular example I have two plates that will need to sit on top of one another so if I look at um, step 4 and then look at step 5 you can see now two new plates have appeared on top of one another so typically for instructions you want to have uh, each new step only have one new kind of layer of stuff applied without having to make uh, kind of sub-assemblies within the model like this that are kind of difficult to understand what is happening if you're just casually looking at the previous step and then all of a sudden you see two plates in here it's like oh wait did I miss one previously you know what I mean it can kind of create a little bit of, a, of an issue uh, but for, um, for certain circumstances like this there is a way in the instructions where you can actually differentiate and you can move this piece away and put a little arrow um, that indicates that that's where that piece goes, and I'll actually show you that when we get to it a little bit later on. So um, you can, so say you had a step where you needed, for whatever reason, um, you know, 10 of these, right? And you didn't want to have 10 steps, right? You could just separate each of these uh, within that one instruction page, and then that would let you um, place them all in one step. Uh, it's kind of hard. I, I'm not really explaining it well, but when we get into that that part of the the build, I'll show you. Um, so let me just try to hurry up and finish this portion of the build here, which is just uh, we're, <laughs> we're only a uh, teeny way of the bit in, and it's already taking forever. So let me go ahead and find my plates modified with the little bars on the side. Um, so this is another part of uh, the process that really takes a while: is just navigating to all of the parts that you need. Um, it just it can't be helped you know you, you just have to learn where they all are and you just have to figure it out so so I know that what I need right now is the handle of a hose so I'm gonna type in hose and I'm gonna scroll down and I need this part right here and this is just something I know from experience of using the software um, okay here I'm gonna show you something that's handy in here so you see how I'm slowly able to move this into place and get it just where I want it to be? Sometimes you'll find that um, it's kind of snapping in, a, in an annoying way. Uh, and the reason for that is, well, snap is on, but I tend to keep that on right there. So but if you look up in, here in this top menu, there's the grid size. And so basically this is just the resolution of how smoothly the parts move. So now I have it set to the maximum grid size. So if I clone this part right here, uh, and cloning, I'll go through that in a second too, but I just want to get through this part. Uh, but basically, this wants to snap to larger and larger units. So um, say if I want to move this part, if I don't feel like it's lined up quite right, uh, I can select the part and I can hover over this um, little tool icon here, which gives me my rotate and move options. Uh, and if I have that larger palette selected, you can see how it's kind of snapping to these really weird kind of predetermined locations. Well, if I turn the grid to the smallest size right here, uh, that doesn't happen. You can move it very smoothly because it has the minimum amount of units uh, to yeah to be able to move it really cleanly into place. So uh, once again, so let me just go over the couple of things that I just showed you that are new. So moving uh, your plates and or uh, moving your parts after you've put them down. Uh, you can hover over this little icon right here, this little kind of spanner, or, oh no, I guess that's a mini fake hand. <laughs> so it's like you're grabbing it with your, your hand. So you hover over that and you can have either rotate, uh, and you can click on that and it, it shows you the options that um, you have to rotate that piece. So you can click on this arrow and you can hold it down and drag it around. Uh, and you can actually just click on this as well and you can type manual amounts in here. So I can do 90 degrees 
or if I want to go the other way, I can do minus 90, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's really handy. Set it back to zero there. Um, so, or you can hover over and you can get the, um, the translate options here. So that's just to move it in and out. So for any reason, if you need to specifically place a part somewhere where um, the program just doesn't want you to place it, so you know, typically you just hover over the the place that you want it to be, and it'll kind of sense where you want it to go. Uh, but yeah, for the specific cases where you need it to be somewhere that the program just doesn't understand, you can move it manually using these arrows. So that's really really handy too. Um, but yeah, I think 90% of the time you're just placing them where they need to be using the program's very intuitive uh, placing options. Okay, so let me just hurry through and try to finish out the rest of this body. So for the next step, I need another one of these uh, parts that I have in here. So I'm going to get my clone tool, click on the part that I want to clone, rotate it into place, and click to place it, right-clicking to exit out of that particular selection. And then next, I want to go in here and um, underneath, I want to place some hollow studs. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to exit out of my hose search here, and I'm going to go down to plates round. I'm going to pick the one with the hole in it. I'm going to place two of those. And then I'm also going to grab one of these. I'm going to put that under there, like so. OK, and then finally, I need some uh, stored under the bar section. I need these uh, really fun little grabby hand pieces. And so I'm going to go ahead and place those into each of these holes. Now, you will sometimes encounter a situation like this where um, the way that the 3D model of this thing is created doesn't actually line up with reality 100% perfectly. So for example, I know in the real world, because I'm looking at this model right now, uh, that these will fit just fine. Uh, but this is kind of showing them colliding. So um, they're, in the real world, there may be a little bit of strain on these parts potentially. But uh, I know that it can take it because I've actually built the thing in real life. And so I can just confirm that this is fine. Um, another thing to note here is I have these little exclamation points down here in my menu. Uh, that's telling me that these parts don't exist in this color. So that's a really important thing to pay attention to because if you have any of these left by the end of your uh, instruction build, you won't be able to build it in real life because those parts simply don't exist. So I'm going to go with dark bluish gray for these. Uh, I do have two of them in light bluish gray on the model, but I think it's going to look cleaner if they're both dark bluish gray. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then next up, I need to go back up to the top section here, step 11, and I need to bring in some additional detail. And then we can go ahead and wrap up this section. So I'm going to grab one of... <laughs> Searching around. Oh, yeah, one of these guys. Uh, sometimes you'll click on a part to select it and it won't take. So like like that, what I just did, I kind of was clicking and moving. Um, the studio, for some reason, likes you to leave your mouse in place while you click. You know, kind of leave it for a second and then it, it'll grab the part you need. And the further that you get into your model, like the more heavy it gets, the worse that, that will become. Like it'll make you wait, what, click and wait, and then hover over to the, <laughs> to drag it into the palette. Um, or to, into the um, building area. Uh, it's just one of those quirks with the program. I think if you possibly have a more powerful system, that might uh, not affect you as much. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place some lever pieces right now. And this is a good time to show you how to work with and manipulate these lever pieces. So that's handy. So I want the uh, antennae of these to be facing upwards. So the way that you do that, um, if I was to just click on this rotate tool here, all it lets me do is move this side to side. But what I want to do here is actually, oops, uh, is I actually want to move the lever piece itself. Uh, oh, and, huh, that's interesting. It won't let me. Let me um, pull this up again and see if I clicked on a weird version of this. Antenna small base with the yellow lever. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. So what I'm going to do is try one of, say, these parts right here. And I'm going to make that in yellow. No, it still doesn't work. Okay. 
that's odd. So I guess what I need to do is to be able to place the antenna. Um, let me see. Antenna. Um, so yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to build this as two separate parts, but it doesn't seem to want to let me move the tip of this. Oh wait, hang on. Okay, I figured it out. Let me delete these. Um, so if I recolor this part yellow. Oh no, I still want it. Okay. If I grab one of these. Can I recolor that yellow? No, I cannot. Huh, that is so interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna build these as two separate elements then. Um, these parts, for whatever reason, seem to be like fixed in place and they won't let me manipulate them. So it gives you the it gives you the two separate parts here that you need for your antenna, the, the base and the actual thing. So I can go ahead and I can rotate this because I need it to be, I'll just, um, I'll just type it. Uh, I need this part to be 90 degrees rotated. Like so, um, and then yeah, for for whatever reason, uh, the program does not want to allow me to manipulate the antenna on these uh, fixed parts right here. So yeah, it's just uh, one of those weird quirks I mentioned. There's a lot of them in this program. <laughs> uh, so I've gone ahead and selected both of these parts. So uh, sh uh, click and then Control click, or sorry, Command click the second one, and I'm doing Command C, Command V to paste or copy and paste it uh, over here. And I'm actually also going to just, uh, no, I was going to say I was going to organize these into submodels, but I'm not going to do that just yet. That is coming up next. Please ignore my waffling right now. I'm just figuring out in my head what I want to do. So uh, for this step, I have these elements right here. Okay, cool. Next step. Um, so yes, there's certain uh, weird kind of things you have to look out for when it comes to... Um, moving parts like like things that are made up of more than one piece there can sometimes be odd quirks that will appear and there's nothing we can really do about it we just kind of have to grin and bear it um it's kind of annoying um so i want to have a transparent uh, neon orange for this let's see how much it costs though so the regular part is three cents um yeah it was point point three two cents for the regular orange and for the neon orange that i actually want it's only 0.34 cents so a 0 0.002 cents difference i can live with that um so let me go ahead and put the last part that i need on here and then we will talk about sub assemblies those are a really really useful and crucial part of the whole design process to understand so i'm really excited to get into that so i just need a regular trans orange tile like so so it's going to give me the the two slightly different colors that gives a really cool effect when they're layered on top of each other, you can't really appreciate it here, obviously, because you're not seeing the light bouncing and interacting and everything on this. You're just seeing these very crude uh, rendered colors here. But uh, trust me, it looks very cool in real life. Um, OK, so I'm going to go ahead and build these two side sub-assemblies uh, that are going to kind of hold this whole central section of the body together. And then the body will be uh, nearly complete. So uh, looking forward to that. Let's get into it. So. Oh, um, ooh, this is actually something good to note. If you click on a part, so say I'm here at step 13, and I click on this part right here, you see how it jumps to that step in the menu? That is very, very useful. And the reason is that if you have a huge model and you don't recall when you placed a certain part, you click on it, it'll take you all the way back up to where that part is, wh whichever step it's on. Uh, and that just helps a ton, especially if you have to make late in the game modifications or changes. Um, and actually, let me just show you that really quick uh, because it's also a very finicky part of the whole process. So, so say um, I realized in this step that for some reason I actually need uh, one of these inkwell pieces in here, right? So you can see how I'm, I'm in step one. Don't move that. <laughs> um, you can see here I'm in step one as far as this is selected. But if I go ahead and click on the inkwell piece, wanting to add that to step one, click on it and I place it and you can see it placed it in step 13 which is my most recent one and the reason that it does that is that it always wants to put the parts that you're using in the most up-to-date location so if I try that again go back up to step one I keep accidentally moving this sorry about that um, so I have to actually click on this part right up here where it says step one and if I click on that 
I'm now within this, and I'm kind of constrained to this part. I can click my inkwell piece, and I can place it, and that will now appear in step one. So that same rule applies if you're, say you want to cut something or copy something from later on in the model, and you want it to be in an earlier step. And the easiest way to do that is for you to just cut and paste it. You have to have the actual step part selected up here before you paste, or it will go to the end, to the very last part right there. So that's just a really um, tricky and annoying little bit of red tape that you have to work around with this uh, program. But um, again, after you get used to it, after you've been using it for a while, it's not the worst thing. So, uh, okay, so let's get into building some self assembly. So I have two sections um, that sit on either side of these uh, studs right here. And those sections are mirrored. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is build one and then I'm going to group them, and then I'm going to mirror that selection to the other side. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. So I need a 2 by 3 plate, like so. And then for the next step, for that, I'm going to place uh, one of these rounded plates once again. That's going to go right here. And then I need a slope. So I'm going to grab my slope category here, so I need one of those. Bada boom, and then I need a curve slope, and that'll be for the next step. Curve kind of slope, like so. And also in this same part right here, I need from my bars, I need one of these round studs with the bar attachment, and I'm going to make that into light bluish gray because that's the color that I need. And then for the final part of the step, I'm going to add a round plate once again, but with the hole in it, just like so. Okay, so this is the sub-assembly that I need, and these are all of the steps. I made sure to um, you know, keep the steps organized, so I have my regular plate, then I add these two parts, then I add these, and finally the uh, round stutter right there. So I'm going to click and drag over all of these, and I'm going to go to Model, Create into Submodel, and I'm going to call it Side Support. Body. You don't necessarily have to name it, but I, I feel like sometimes it's easier to just keep track of things that way. So what it's done is it's taken all of those steps and it's put them inside of a group that I can just now click and move around, which is very, very handy. So here is the side support body uh, group that I created right here. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and place that where it needs to be. So right here. Uh, and then for the next step, so it, it kind of left me a blank step. Um, that always happens whenever you create a group. It just leaves you the next step blank, um, which is, I guess, kind of handy. So what I'm going to do is click on it, and I'm going to go down here to the Copy and Mirror, which only appears when you have something selected. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that and place it right here. Uh, sometimes when you hit Copy and Mirror like that, you'll see that the part appears kind of inside of your model, and you won't be able to select it because it's just stuck. The best way to get around that I have found is to just hit um, Command X for cut, and then Command V for paste, and then you have, um, you know, it kind of snaps to the location of your cursor. So that's just something to keep in mind if you if your part gets stuck and you're not really sure how to get it out of there. Um, so what this will now give me in the instructions is when we hit this step right here, step 14, it will then go into sub steps um, and then show you how to build that uh, group then you'll have a, sec a separate blank step where it shows you where that group gets placed. And then the next step will be beginning to build uh, now this group. So where it says step 15, in the instructions, we're probably up to step you know, 25 or 30 now because we have all the sub steps uh, in here as well. So you'll see all that when I get into the instruction build, but uh, grouping is a very, very essential and uh, you know kind of important part of this whole process and how you group and link and uh, manage your, your sub assemblies here is very, very important to the overall process. So it's really good, uh, a really good thing to note. Um, finally, you'll see here that I have the side support body and side support body one on two separate steps. And that is because I want the builder to build one and place it, then build the other, then place it. However, uh, like we're about to see now, I'm going to build something that is. Um, I'm going to build something that is designed to be mirrored, uh, but it's the same assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and clone that one instead of mirroring it. So uh, let me just double click in here to grab this part because it's easier to grab it from there than to find.
find it again. So I need one of these, and then I need one of these. And uh, as your model gets bigger, um, you'll likely find that there are more places on it that you can just grab from and, and steal for the next part rather than having to navigate down here and find each individual piece. So uh, that's kind of a, a benefit as you go along. The more parts you have just here in the palette uh, or here in the, uh, the building area, the less you have to rely on the palette. So that's cool. So I have my two steps here for this little sub-assembly. I'm going to go ahead and create that into a sub model. I'm going to call it hand support like so. And then I'm going to clone this. So previously I used copy and mirror, but now I'm just going to clone. The reason is it's the same exact assembly. Either way, you just rotate it around and you place it. So I need one here and one here. And so those are the same assembly, and that will get a times two uh, marking in the instructions. And so I'm going to go ahead and place those on the same step. So we have both groups here on step 16. So that will automatically generate a um, build this assembly times two in the instructions. So that's really handy. So then moving on to step 17, I'm just going to quickly save because the program is kind of finicky, like I mentioned. So sometimes it will just crap out on you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place the final couple of elements that I need for this uh, torso, and then we'll move on to the limbs. So I just need a uh, modified tile, which is one of these that has the cut at 45 degree angle. Go ahead and place that on here. One there and one there. And these to be black. And there's that. And then I need a plate as well. I'm going to place that on the same step of the instructions. Then on the next one, I'm going to put a ingot piece. So type ingot. Grab one of these, put it there. And then make that black. And then next up, I'm going to place these regular round plates back here and then I have another sub assembly coming up so I'm going to grab one of these once again I'm going to be using a lot of these for this build like so and then I'm going to need kind of a specialized technic part and technic is probably the the thing that it takes me the longest to navigate around because I'm the least familiar with it and I use it the least so it always takes me a while to find exactly the part that I need in the Technic selection. Um, but if I scroll down, I should be able to find it. I know you're in here, peace. Can that make yourself known to me? Uh, let me know down in the comments where the part is that I need. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys don't know. How would you know? You can't see what's here in the real world. No, it's definitely not in the gears. Could it be in with the axles? No, it should be here. Okay, wait, let's see. Bah, bah, bah. Mm -mm -mm. By the way, if you've ever wondered how I spend my days, uh, this is how I spend my days, just doing exactly what you see right now. <laughs> Staring at endless lists of parts. It's so infuriating when you, when you know something should be in a certain place and it's just not. Two hours later. There it is. I found it. Oh my gosh, it was there the whole time, staring right at me. Okay. So I go ahead and place that on there, and then so I need to make this a second step. So I'm going to drag that part under there, so that is a separate step. Select these and create into submodel. So previously I went up to model, create into submodel, but you actually can do it down here as well. It gives you this option when you're selecting the parts. I'm going to call it piston. I'll just call it piston. It's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it on here. And then I'm going to copy and paste, which is the same. Uh, in effect, it's the same as clone. Uh, but the only difference is uh, I just did Control-C, contr or Command-C, Command-V, right, in order to copy this. So if I clone it, the only difference is uh, it does give me another one. But then when I click, it just gives me more and more and more. So if I know that I only want one additional um, copy, I will just go ahead and do copy paste as opposed to the clone tool. So I'm going to just move this roughly into place here where I need it to be because the piston here is going to connect to this bar that you see right here. And then I'm going to edit this one. And because these are copies of the same model, and actually let me put them on the same step as well, 
because these two are copies of each other, they are linked. So when I edit one, uh, it will affect the other, and it tells you as much in this handy little uh, window right here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this piston down so that it's in the correct location so that both of these are now roughly connected where they should be. So let me just move this over a teensy little bit here. Oh, actually, it is reading as connected, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, rotating and uh, moving the parts around in this manner is really, really tricky initially. So like you can see here, I have the rotate options. It gives me two options right here. It's asking me where do I want to rotate from here or there. Because it is connected to both locations right now, I actually really can't rotate it anymore because it's reading this whole thing as one model. Uh, there, there's a ton of that kind of stuff. So like I could, if I wanted to really finesse the rotation on this, I would move this part away. Then I would rotate it once again. So I could rotate it. Uh, but this time it's rotating from the middle, which is not ideal. But then I could rotate it, I could place it back, etc., etc. It's just kind of something you have to feel out, like I said. So uh, because these are now all connected, so it's connected uh, here and there, it doesn't know how to rotate it anymore. Uh, as opposed to this part that I showed you earlier on, this knows that the only part that is actually studded in or connected to the model is this part right here. So it knows that I can rotate from that point. Um, but if I was to connect these two together with some kind of an additional piece in the middle, then it would be very confused and not know how to rotate it any longer. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, so there you go, that is the entire torso completed. I'm gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is the legs, and I'm just gonna try to power through this as much as possible. And then, um, you know, hopefully you guys uh, can bear with me whilst I hurry up and do it. <laughs> uh, try not to talk about it too much because um, most of the stuff that we've seen already Oops, uh, trying to for pearl gold there. Uh, most of the stuff that we've already discussed, uh, you know, you guys already get it, so I don't want to just keep repeating myself. So I'm just going to try to go through this as quick as I can. Uh, the cool thing about this is you guys get to really see and experience uh, what it's like for me every time I make instructions for one of my models. Um, it, uh, it takes a minute. It takes a fair minute, I will say. All right, so let's see. I'm going to just do leg assembly now. So, yeah. I'm bring in some clips for to hold in the bar piece that I have here. So I have one of those and one of those. I'm go ahead and claw one of these. And then I need the tile in front of that. Oh, whoops, I totally made a mistake on my very first <laughs> my very first break I laid down for this part. So I'm going to go to step 22 and I'm going to replace that, um, keeping it selected as I did before. I'm going to show you guys about that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and place yeah, one of these in here in yellow. Boom, that's what I meant to do. And you can see here I went to the correct step because I had it selected. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a tile the front uh, foot plate there. So this part I can now, oops, there you go. Select that and place it in there. And it looks like I want this to be the other way around and something like that. Give or take. I can always adjust it later if it's not exactly quite right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the connecti uh, connecting part that goes down to the foot. So let me find my piece in here that I need with the bar attachment, uh, like so. And then I also want to get, uh, at the same time, one of these. Yes, thank you. Now that I've uh, shown you guys this little <laughs> dialog box, I don't need to see it again. All right, put that in there. And this is going to be the piston for the back leg. a couple of uh, modified tiles in here, which are the clips. So we've got these guys, so one, two. Uh, and then that's going to do it for this section. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, and I'm going to group them, or uh, sub 
create a image of subnet, so I'm going to do uh, this would be right uh, leg main. <laughs> I typed Lego. Just <laughs> force of habit at this point. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the ankle really quick, or the ankle on the foot. So I need uh, one of these right here. Oops, and then it goes this way around. And then, so I'm going to build it uh, separately, like away from the the ankle assembly. So this is going to click into here, but I'm just going to build it here because I want to be able to easily select everything uh, and um, you know make it into a group as well. So I don't want to have to like carefully, um, you know what I mean? Carefully try to go around <laughs> picking all the pieces because that's in the way. Uh, so that one wants to be black, and then I'm going to use. Uh, a little bit ahead of myself here. Let me go ahead and place these in the next step. Um, oh, and another thing that you can do um, if you have a piece that you want to move to somewhere specific, you can actually go uh, right click on it and you can say move to and it will give you the steps here. Uh, that can be a little bit tricky sometimes because depending on how many steps you have, uh, it may be not, <laughs> not apparent right away where you want to move it to. So I tend to just grab pieces and manually drag them uh, to where they need to be uh, or just cut and paste them and place them there that way. So let me get the parts here for the toe. So for my um, for my main physical build I have a, a little bit more variation of color um, just because of the parts that I have on hand but uh, as I'm going through and doing this uh, now I think I'm going to try to unify it a little bit, or I have been uh, unifying a little bit. Um, so less of the, the dark yellow color and um, less of the pearl gold where I can avoid it. Because um, I think it just helps to, you know, just helps to tie it together. Uh, and then I'm just going to uh, angle this one forward a little bit here because it's supposed to be this kind of forward facing piston detail. I'm going to clone. Uh, this guy right here, and place it on the other side, and then just rotate its angle to match. It doesn't have to be exact for this. Uh, okay, and then just the final piece that I need here, so that's that last step. Cool, so I'm going to go ahead and select that, create it to submodel, I'm going to call it right foot, and place it under here. Uh, like so, where it needs to go. So the whole uh, leg assembly tends to want to be rotated uh, in this direction to give it more of that kind of standing, kind of open stance like that. So I'm going to go ahead and place it like that, and then I can go ahead as well and create that into a submodel. So I'll just call it right leg. So that's the whole right leg. And all of these sub-assemblies and things that I have in there will be preserved. Uh, and then I want to place that right here. Let me actually just double check on my physical model by reattaching the leg. <laughs> that is what I intended for it. Yes, that is what I intended for it. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, but I think the spacing seems to be working out more comfortably on my physical model for some reason. Where, let's see. Just trying to line this up really nice and careful. All right, so I'm gonna do 41. Uh, I'm gonna manually type in these numbers since it won't let me get to so frustrating. <laughs> uh, ah, come on. It's really frustrating when you have to try to guess. Oh my gosh, okay. 40. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So just, you know, pretty much getting that in there as close as I can. And then um, see how the interior of this hollow stud is protruding into this geometry right here. So if I turn on my collision detector, which is right here, this gives me a warning. It turns these parts transparent to let me know that there is actually some collision happening with the geometry. 
And if I look, actually, there's a collision warning up front here as well. So there's a good way that you can fix those things uh, pretty easily. So what you do is you right click onto the, uh, the affected area if it's in a group, and you go to Submodel, Edit, and that way you can just select, uh, oh, this is actually two, two layers deep, so I'd have to go onto this one and say, once again, Submodel, Edit. That lets you select the part that you want to move out of the way, and you can just see See here that it's uh, no longer, well, I was gonna say it's no longer transparent, but it still was. <laughs> Let me go ahead and move this out a little bit more. Let's see if that takes care of that. Oh, okay, I see, I see. It's, it's actually this part right here is colliding this little handle. So let me go ahead and, um, oops, rotate that forward just a little bit more. There you go, so that clears out of the way of that. Well, now where is it hitting? <laughs> it's telling me that it's hitting something else. Oh, I think it might be this bracket now. So the bracket is hitting it as well. Okay. So I have to very, very carefully, let me just turn this off. Very carefully negotiate in between those two things so that I don't hit either one. Man, this is tight spacing. Okay. One more time. I'm just going to move it up. And yeah, this is slightly more like that. So that's definitely not touching. Ah, but this part is still touching. Okay, so I'm just looking at this little bit of collision in here. Um, and once again, I know that this works in real life, so I, I shouldn't you know, be stressing about it too much. Um, because, yeah, I, maybe I don't have the physical geometry in here exactly one-to-one -one matching. Um, but when you actually build the thing, it's fine. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so there, no collision warning there, that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust the angle of this piston to match roughly what I have on the other side so it doesn't look weird. So I'm just double clicking there to go back to the main um, kind of uh, top layer here, the main model. Um, so another thing that you can do actually is if you want to just look at it in isolation and you right click on it, you say view instead of edit and that just takes you into a new uh, little area here where you just have the sub model that you want, and if you want to uh, return to the main model, you can click return to main model. Or if you're like, say, I'm going two layers deep, so I'm now going to view this sub model within the sub model, you can either return to upper model, which is the leg, or main model, which is the whole thing. So it kind of gives you um, options for that. So let me just go ahead and, um, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and, no, I'm gonna go to the main model, because I wanna see, uh, this bar so that I can make sure that it's not uh, intersecting. So I'm going to go edit, edit, I'm going to select these things here, and I'm going to bring them forward, 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 oops, Man, see this is uh, this is tricky right here, <laughs> getting everything lined up exactly, sometimes it takes a little bit of practice, but you can see there it's clearing it now, and so that error should be gone. Very nice, okay cool. So what we can do is go ahead and take this leg and I can copy mirror it because I'm gonna need another one on the other side. And go ahead and place that where it needs to be. Just like that. I think I could still stand to move this forward just ever so slightly. I know it's, I said it's kind of a pointless thing but um, it, it does bug me a little bit sometimes. I'd like to get things lined up as much as possible. <laughs> To do 39. No, it's 37. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do 38.8. Oh, you guys, this is painful. Okay, 38.7. This is as good as it's gonna get. Okay. <laughs> so now that I have the two legs done, I can go ahead and do the arms. So I'm gonna add a step here. Um, oh, this this little uh, view right here is because I had opened up uh, this model and I was looking at it and everything. So if you just click on that, you can kind of collapse it back down so you don't just have that, you know, untidy look with a bunch of sub models showing in the, the menu here. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and do the arms. So I'm going to start with the uh, main kind of attachment point, um, which is just below the elbow, so I'm going to go to my modified plates. Add in uh, one of these, yes. Oops. Okay. And then onto that, I'm going to place 
one of these. So I'm not sure in yellow which one of these molds is cheaper. So I'm just going to click on each one. So this is uh, $0.1 so 10 cents, or I guess 14 cents. This is 5 cents a piece. So I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to go with this one. Because, you know, I always want to try to make sure that I uh, give you guys the best chance to. Oh my god, go around the other way. <laughs> Uh, I give you guys the best chance to, you know, get the models fairly cheaply. That's important. And then, because you know, Lego is an expensive hobby, and it's nice to be able to not have to spend a ton every time. So I need a tile here. So I need a one by one tile with the uh, lip underneath it. That's the regular mold right there. Next step, I'm going to go to my slopes and I'm going to get a inverted slope. One of these, and it's going to go under here. And then also we're going to do a little assembly with some plates and sandwiching in yet another one of these piston pieces. So I'm going to do grab one of these, boom, boom. So when you see me here, I'm just double clicking to go inside, copying, clicking, uh, double clicking again to get out of it, um, in case you're wondering what I'm doing there. And then, so that's the bar, and then we need one more of these plates in here. Cool, so that's kind of the main assembly there for the shoulder. Now, uh, there's a string piece that needs to get attached in here, and I'm gonna show you that uh, a little bit later on. String pieces are not good in this program. <laughs> they are not, not handled very efficiently. But um, yeah, that's going to attach there, and then I'm going to sandwich that string piece into place with a curved slope that will sit on top, but that has to come later. So for now, this is all we're going to do. Um, and actually, you know what, uh, let me do one more thing. So inside of these uh, sub-assemblies here, I actually was supposed to put a pneumatic T-bar piece. So let me go ahead and add that at the end. So T-bar, go ahead and find one of those. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, pneumatic T-bar, okay. And this is what attaches the, um, the arm. And so I just wanted to put that in there. And of course, it only comes in gray or black, I think white. Oh, and brown, yep. Okay, cool. So then let me go back to the main model. And let me just actually grab, copy that piece, and then we'll go back into the uh, the other side here. So Submodel view. I'm gonna add a step at the end. And I'm gonna place my T-bar piece in here. Like so. And then I want it to be, I believe I want it to be facing down actually. So that way. Uh, I believe that's right. Okay. I can check it when I <laughs> look at the main model if they don't match. Okay, they match. Cool. Um, so yes, this part right here is going to plug into this part right here. So let me go ahead and do create into submodel like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and just place it on here because it's already uh, in a group. And then I'll do uh, actually going to rename this one. So if you don't, if you forget to name it like I just did, you can go ahead and just uh, rename it. So I'm going to do left arm upper. Cool, cool, cool. And then uh, and instead of right leg mirrored, I'm actually going to also rename that to be left leg instead. So it's a little bit clearer. Um, okay, cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and to the forearm. So I need um, another one of these pieces. Let me go ahead and get that. I'm going to go into my plates modified and grab one of those. New step. Uh, one of those handy dandy these guys. Let's see. Yes. I think this is the mold that I want that comes in yellow. It is. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's two different mold types for this one. Uh, there's the older style one in... Oh, that also comes in yellow. Okay. Um, I thought these were only like gray. 
So this one is uh, four cents a piece, and this one is 13 cents a piece. Oh, actually, I'm gonna go with the old mold. There you go. Um, cool, so then that attaches to there like so. So then I need a bracket. Let me go ahead and grab one of those. And I need one of the up-facing ones. I'm go ahead and do that on a new step. And then into that, I'm going to place a fire hose piece. Oops, I actually meant to just type hose, but you know what? I don't even need to do that because just remember to have one right here. So that goes into this little hole right here and becomes our handle for Ripley to hold onto. And then, uh, so that is actually the forearm complete. So I'm going to go ahead and group that. Great, right into some model left forearm. Place that on here where it belongs. Cool, cool, cool. And then uh, I want to do the first hand. So let's see, I need a modified brick. I need a headlight brick for that. And into that headlight brick, I'm gonna place about one of these. Like so. I'll just do that on a separate step, because why not make life easier for everybody who's following along on the instructions. And then I'm going to place one of these on top of here. And I'm just gonna grab one of these from in here. Another reason why um, grabbing the parts from within your model is a good idea, oops, put that wrong way, uh, is because you know that it's the same mold. So all of these parts in here, I don't actually accidentally have a second type of clip piece, which just can complicate things and make it harder to uh, order the parts that you need. So it's better to try to keep everything as consistent as you can. Um, Oh, and I was talking, so I got that wrong. Sorry, that should have been another one of these. Uh, and then I need the plate with the clip on top of that. There you go. Um, so that's actually the entirety of the hand assembly. Well, no, I guess not, actually. I need a bar still. Let me grab that. Um, but yeah, so when you're making instructions like this or, or digital files like this, you really want to try to keep um, cost in mind, but also um, the accessibility through like different stores. And keeping your molds consistent is a really good way to do that um, because it it doesn't trigger like an alarm when you're uh, uh, when you're checking out a BrickLink. Or trying to run the algorithm, it doesn't have to scour multiple stores to try to find each specific different mold type of the same piece, essentially. Uh, you know, and that can cause just pointless, unnecessary problems. So I'll go ahead and grab one of these because I need to start doing the fingers now. So the fingers are two identical assemblies, so that'll take uh, save a little bit of time there. Uh, and then I need a decorated element, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my decorating tab there. And I need a caution tape uh, one by two tile. So yeah, I think this one will do. I don't really uh, know about this other design here. Let's see. So that's, that's 20 cents per piece. This one's 30 cents per piece. Interesting. I wonder if there's any other options in here that are cheaper. Well, that looks like about it for caution tape. Mm, yeah, all the rest are one by fours and things, and I need a one by two. Hmm, okay. All right, I guess we'll have to go with the... Is that like gray though? Or is it just older? It says black and yellow danger stripes in the description. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, this is um, quite a bit cheaper, so I'm gonna go with this one. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, folks, when they're when folks are ordering these things for themselves, they can, of course, take the liberty to change things as they like. So, if somebody doesn't like that particular pattern of um, striped piece, they can change it out. 
Um, okay, cool. So I need that, and then I need one little old tile. Uh, again, I'll just grab that from in here. Oops. Copy, exit out, paste. And I like that, um, you know, you saw that piece was, the, uh, was kind of at a funky angle there when I brought it in, but then uh, it kind of straightens itself out when you, because it, it wants to try to line up with the pieces that exist already uh, in your scene, so that's really cool. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to create this into a submodel and call it finger, oh, oops, not finger, apostrophe, finger, Cool, and then I need one of those to be up here, and then I need to clone this guy, or copy it, whichever, and then flip it around and put it under on this side, like so. Cool, so then I can take uh, my all the different sub-assemblies here, and I can group them, so I have all the different pieces of the arm, and I'm gonna group that and call it left, and I'm going to do a copy mirror for that. I'll place it on this side, and uh, it is—it's pretty reliable uh, the copy mirror thing. But sometimes, if you have things like um, I don't have any here, but if you have like wedge plates that are a really specific size that that there are kind of two elements of, like there's a left and a right mold for that particular piece. Sometimes it will get confused, and it will orient things weirdly or, or do funky stuff. Um, with that, so do just check after you do your copy mirror that it's um, behaving the way that you want it to. So there's that. Um, so we're almost done. Let me go ahead and do the roll cage um, element because then I realized I need to switch a few things around actually, and we'll do that afterwards. So that'll be a good thing for you guys to see as well. I'm just going to collapse some of these tabs that are open under here for no reason. Uh, so the roll cage is fairly simple, so I need a couple of bars, first one being a four long yellow lightsaber hilt bar, and then I'm going to uh, add onto that one of these, again just double click, copy, double click again, paste. And then I need a modified plate with the two prongs sticking out of it, which is this one here. I'm not sure about the pricing on these. I want to say these are not, yeah, these don't exist in yellow anyway, so that's fine. So go ahead and place that on there. And again, this was a part that on my original one had uh, the kind of uh, intense kind of sun orange color because that's just what I have, happen to have on hand, but I'm happy to see that it's available in the regular yellow color because this really should be a more consistent yellow color throughout. So um, I'll go back to the bar uh, tab here because I need one of these. I'll go ahead and place those on here. I'm just checking with my real world reference roughly where those should be. So there they sit. Yeah, pretty much where these clip on is pretty much um, equidistant on either side. Oops, so I was trying to grab both of these. <sighs> Studio is being stubborn today. Okay. So I want these clips to basically line up with these bars right here. So they're pretty much in the exact right spot there. And I want this little bit of overhang. That's perfect. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and do a new step. I'm going to add two more of these, but I'm going to put them on the top now, like so. And it, there's a, a kind of a cool feel to these where um, you kind of, as you're slowly progressing down, you see that stop right there, it just kind of hits a stop. That's the program's way of letting you know that it's it's all the way in as far as it'll go, which is a really handy little feature when you're trying to line up something that you can't actually see the interior of. So I like that uh, a whole lot. Um, so I didn't need to add the bar onto this step, so I'll go ahead and move it down. And then we need uh, two sub-assemblies, so I need a... Um, I need one of those... What are those things called? It's um, It was used as an arm, so let me just have arm. 
and oh, exoforce. That's what it was. So I need an exoforce arm. I think they're in here somewhere. Uh, so you can see how um, how much easier it is to type <laughs> and then scroll a little bit rather than trying to search through every single category. So I really do encourage you to get comfortable with that. So this is the mold that comes uh, in yellow. The other one is not available in that color. I'm gonna go ahead and place that there. And then I need uh, another one of these uh, Exoforce hand pieces. So really a true Exoforce sub-assembly here, the arm and the hand that were designed to go together initially. Go ahead and place that in there. Get it down in there as far as it'll go. So, oops, about a little, a little bit higher than that, I think. About like so. I'm going to actually make this one into a light bluish gray. Oh, these come in orange. Huh, who knew? Uh, this is actually another cool thing about uh, using this program is you get uh, familiar with um, cage. You get familiar with the colors of parts that um, you may not have in your collection, but which are available. <clears throat> and that's something that's really cool to um, become familiar with, because if you're a designer like me, it's nice to have in the back of your head things that are uh, available that you might not know about. So uh, I need an exact duplicate of one of these, so I'm going to go ahead and just copy paste it. It's the same build, so I'm going to keep it on the same uh, step of the instructions so that I get a times two on the instructions for me. Then I just need uh, another arm piece, which is actually one of these battle droid arms. So it's one of these guys right here. And I need this one in black. I'm going to put it so that the reinforced shoulder joint portion is at the bottom. Go ahead and recolor that in black. And then I need a one of the relatively new uh, two long uh, bar pieces. So this guy right here kind of looks like um, the lipstick molds that Lego's been using for a long time, but this is actually made of proper ABS plastic instead of that rubbery stuff. So this is a much, much better and very welcome part. I'm very glad that they have that. So I'm gonna do a flame piece or a fire piece. No, I guess a little flame. Uh, there you go, I need one of these. So these um, also are really handy because they, there you go, uh, because they accept the mini peg, um, or they have a mini peg hole in the end, so they ex accept those accessories like the flame pieces. So it makes really good, uh, makes for really good candle and things of that sort, so that's really cool. So this is a little um, blowtorch that Ripley uses to temporarily stun the alien queen. Um, so that is our complete roll cage. So I'm going to go ahead and make this into a submodel roll cage. I don't need that left or right designation since there's only one. And that sits right in here. I'm going to see if I can kind of... I want... Um, in the real uh, model, this part right here attaches to this part right here. I want to try to do some sneaky rotations here to get that to work. So I'm gonna you know, kind of lift this whole thing up a little bit. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna edit the submodel. And I'm going to try to select this guy here and see if I can rotate all of this. Oops, down a little bit there. So it's kind of hard to see with this kind of grayed out view here. Um, but you do kind of get used to, uh, you do kind of get used to it after a while. So I, I can see here that the, the part that I need to line up with is right here. So I'm kind of in the zone uh, like that. So something about like that. Let me go back out and see. Oh, look at that. That's pretty much perfect. <laughs> uh, awesome. So yeah, that is actually very nearly the complete model. Uh, the final thing that I need to do is to rearrange some of the elements in here, like I was mentioning before. So I have this long string piece that connects on this shoulder up here, wraps down and around through these studs under here, and then over to the other side. So I actually need to remove um, this element right here. So I'm gonna cut that, and I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the bottom here and paste it, like so. And then uh, before this step, 
I need to have my stream piece. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm actually just going to move this out of the way because I'm going to be uh, using this area a lot and it's going to be a big pain in the butt. And I don't want to have to <laughs> negotiate around this piece. Um, and then for the time being, also, I'll just go ahead and work in the final step here because why not? I don't really, you know, I know that I'm going to move this piece to, to last. I can just do that at the end. So I'm going to select my final stage here and I'm going to go to flexible elements uh, right here. And I'm going to grab one of the longer string pieces with a stud on it. So those are in this menu right here. Now, let's see, I'm going to click on one just to see. Is, no, I think that's too long. I think it's one of these that I want. Yes, okay, this is the one I want. And I want to make that be in the uh, black color. I think black or rubber black, both is read the same way by Bricklink. I don't think it especially matters, but um, this is where it gets kind of interesting because you know I have to do all of that weaving that I was just describing to you. Um, and, oops, and this is going to start off connected right here, and it's going to end on the other side. So what we do in order to work with the string piece, we uh, have this little kind of flexible, it looks like a horseshoe, but it's like a little flexible uh, thing. And I can click on the end stud here, and I can actually pull on it, and I can grab that, and I can uh, orient it so that it's connected down here. But I want to, using my arrow keys, I just want to flip it so that the string part is coming out of the top of that stud, if that makes sense, right? So it goes from here and connects into there. Previously, it was oriented so that it would be going down and wrapping underneath from the bottom, so I uh, didn't want that. So now I have this very awkward, uh, annoying, bendy shape here. And this is where, I mean, Anakin would say this is where the fun begins, but it's not fun, trust me. So you kind of have to slowly move around the shape and drag the different parts of the string around and just sort of click off when you're done editing shape and then you sort of float your way to something that kind of makes sense so this is sort of right let's see if I can grab this and just pull it out a little bit here uh, and then once once the string goes inside of um, other pieces, it's really, really difficult to then grab it and move it around. So I'm going to try to move these parts out to the side. Just open one here and one there. <laughs> uh, like I was mentioning previously, this is the one part of this program that I think really needs work. Um, there needs to be some kind of manual shaping control for this. Uh, that just simply doesn't exist, or, or you know, better options for like a follow, uh, follow tool of some kind. I'm trying to drag this out. Oh man, this is really, this is really not going to work. And also, <laughs> be careful when you're, um, when you're messing with this. If you hit undo, so like say you you had a shape that you kind of liked, and then you messed it up, and you hit undo, it will undo in, to the previous state. Uh, not like one click back, but all the way back to uh, when you first started manipulating it. So I would lose this entire shape and it would go back to being a U uh, sticking out of the top of this thing right here. So that would not be good. Um, I'm just checking this against my real world model to see how I had initially lined this up because I want to make sure that it's connecting nicely. So bear with me one second. Two hours later. Okay, so after about an hour of messing around, uh, uh, this is the best that I could come up with. Um, so what I ended up doing is I copied all of the relevant parts of the model and just duplicated them over here, including obviously the string. So I could work on the string away from the model because the parts kept getting dragged to the inside. I'm actually going to delete this horrid string right here. Um, yeah, the parts get, kept getting dragged inside of it and then I couldn't access them anymore. So uh, what I ended up doing is just copying the parts that I roughly wanted it to go around, and it's it's by no means exact uh, at all. Um, and usually what I resort to for this kind of thing is I take a photo of the physical model showing uh, exactly how the strings should be 
uh, placed and then I go ahead and <laughs> just insert that into the uh, into the instructions. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that string and I'm going to paste it over here and just connect it and you know it's it's wobbly, it's busted, it's going through the model in a few places but it's it's close enough. Um, and one one tip that I did find to working with the string is um, up here we have this camera button and if you click on that uh, it gives you a bunch of options for different orthographic views, so orthographic being flat with no perspective. And um, so working on it, you know, a little at a time in these orthographic views, I was able to, you know, ever so slightly tweak, 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 and uh, bring things closer together. Um, I'm actually going to copy this and paste it over here. Sorry. There you go. I just wanted to have a, a backup string in case I messed this one up. But so... <laughs> So basically what I did was um, I found the, the view that was kind of the, the closest that I wanted to see and then I would just um, go ahead and just ever so slightly, oops, a little at a time, you can see it's incredibly frustrating, drag the points out one little bit at a time and even, even the very very slight movements that I'm doing now you know, there's no guarantee that it won't just break and flip out on you and just get destroyed. And you can see there a bunch of my hard work that I already did before has now been destroyed because this is all going off in the wrong direction. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be coming through here, and it's all going off. So, um, yeah, like I said, the string system uh, is awful. It's it's absolutely. I mean, I hate to say the word trash because it sounds like um, some kind of video game. Uh, commentator or something, uh, but it's, it's basically, that's the only word I can really think of to describe it. Uh, it does not work. So hopefully uh, the folks over at Bricklink are, let me just delete these, uh, are working on that, uh, working on a better solution for the string at some point because um, it's not really functional. So um, what I'm actually going to do is move this uh, this tile piece to the same step as the string because the um, the string is actually supposed to feed through this tile piece and what I'm going to do is add an instruction uh, separate uh, photograph for that that's going to show how that's supposed to work. Uh, so moving on to the last two pieces of the build. Uh, so let me get rid of my strings here, I don't need those, and get my two curved slopes. So those will just be a single step here at the end boom and boom and let's just lock the strings in place and there we go from the front view it looks pretty darn good uh, you can't see all of the messed upness back here I mean it's not it's not that bad you know you can kind of tell what it's meant to be doing so um, yeah so that is the finished model um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over now to instruction mode so I just hit save every time you switch to instruction mode it makes you save anyway uh, but I like to do it on my own just in case there's a crash and who knows what might happen so then uh, immediately here you're confronted with this step editor. Um, I guess here you can sort of figure out, um, I actually never use this, but you can basically move things around up and down it, I believe. You can re reorder the, the stages and everything. But the part that I always go to is the page editor, which is where you see the actual physical instructions uh, that are automatically generated by the program thus far. And now it's your job to go through and uh, look at each image and say, is it clear what's happening here? And if not, um, you basically, as you hover over this, the central page here, you see this blue border that appears. If you click on that, you have the option here to change the step view. And so you can go ahead and you can rotate uh, the model around until you see the correct orientation for what you want to see. Now, each of these parts can actually be individually moved, so that's you click on the individual part and you get the buffer exchange. That's what I was telling about before, um, way back at the start of the video, where uh, you have these arrows and you can click on them and it'll basically move and offset. And you can see uh, in here, it gives you numerical values for those offsets. So you can move the parts out of the way and you can do, like you, you have a little arrow right here and you can show the person who's building the instructions. Uh, what they need to do. So you can pick the color of the arrow as you can see there. You can um, move the beginning and end of it. So if I wanted to say, you know, it's wonky and it has to go on this stud, you can kind of move that around. But typically the default arrow is pretty good. 
Um, but yeah, I just like to show like, okay, so there's two parts, one is going on to the other. Then uh, to navigate between the pages here, you can just click on each page or you can hit A to go back to the previous page or D to move on to the next page on a keyboard. So AD are your two kind of backwards and forwards controls. And then you basically just go through and you look at, so here, uh, I know that these two parts are being laid down, but it's kind of hard to see uh, what they're doing exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a change step view here. And then you get this um, rotation icon that appears uh, on its own, which is really cool. Sometimes you don't need it, like on that first step when I uh, changed the orientation, I didn't need one of those because it's step number one and there's nothing to change, right? Because it's, <laughs> it's just getting going. Um, and then if, say I can't really see the stud on the other side of that, um, the, the other side of that face there, and I just wanna make it really, really clear to the viewer uh, what's going on in this, um, in the step, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a tiny bit of sorry, should have been negative, tiny bit of rotation here, just so that I can see the stud on the other side here and here, and then we can move on, and I can actually just uh, reset this angle to the kind of more standard orthographic view going forward, and then here, uh, that's that's actually the example I was telling you about in the other part of the video. I wanted to move this down. Now, if you click on the arrow, it automatically moves it up by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and do minus 40 for that instead of 40. So I move it in the downward direction. Um, you can tell that I'm used to shooting regular style videos because I was actually pointing down with my hand as if you could see that. <laughs> um, so there we go. So I like to make my arrows red just so they match with the outline that I've chosen to go with here. So there you can see it's abundantly clear. The plate is going in underneath this plate that has already been placed. Moving on, that looks fine, that looks fine. We have one of those, yep, that looks good. Okay, so here I'm gonna flip this uh, the other way around, just so I can see underneath, and I'm gonna leave that flip icon there so that the viewer knows that they're supposed to turn their model upside down. And here I'm gonna flip it back again, like so. And then this is all looking good. So now here we have our first sub-assembly. So it's showing you here a picture of the completed subassembly up in the corner and you have control over that too like you can change the orientation of that if you so desire um, I'm just going to delete this because I don't need it uh, and then here you have the first part so we can go ahead and skip to the next step next step next step all right that looks good so now we see uh, this this uh, gets a step that uh, number here the, this is step 19 um, I'm actually going to change this and just make it just a little bit bigger um, and so step 19 uh, is just placing the sub-assembly onto the main model. So we can go to the next one, and we can see here, yep, 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 that all looks fine. And then step 25 is placing the second one. Um, and then I'm just gonna rotate this around so I can make sure I can see clearly. So um, also another thing to note is when you're dragging the, the model around, you see there's this kind of barrier around it, like you can see these blue outlines around the sub-assembly, um, the dark blue lines around the main thing. If you try to drag this outside of the bounding box here, it won't let you because it's um, it's making sure that what needs to be seen for this build can be seen right here. And then if you want to just keep things nice and clean, you can also do align to current step center, and that will just place it uh, roughly in the middle of the page. Well, not roughly, uh, exactly <laughs> in the middle of the page according to the thing that you just built. It kind of goes by like the center of mass I don't know exactly how it does it, but it's uh, it's basically putting it right in the center of the page. Or you can drag it around, and you see these red arrow or these red lines will appear horizontally and vertically to let you know that you're in the middle of the page on either axis. So you can kind of snap it that way. Um, I'm going to also delete this because for these placement steps, we don't need to tell a viewer to turn the model because the last step is always this and then this. So then we'll move on to the next step assembly. So you can see here, um, this is what I was talking about, by having those two sub-assemblies on the same step in the uh, main building page, it's given us a two times right here, which is really nice. And then I also like to add a second two times here. So I go insert text, and then I just type x2. And I usually like to make the font here a little bit, uh, or the size of the font a little bit larger and make it bold just so that it's really clear and easy to read. And then I place that 
somewhere down in here. Um, and that's just something that they have in the actual instruction manuals for LEGO as well. They remind you here at the beginning and then here at the end that you need two of this assembly, just so that uh, you don't forget or you don't miss it. I'm gonna go ahead and I guess I'll just pull this up a little bit here, like so, something about like that. Um, and then we just have ordinary steps here. So now this has gotten a little bit out of alignment, so each of these steps I have to right-click and say align to the center. And then I'm also going to rotate this so that I can see what's happening here. And then I have my two times. So actually I should have up here copied my times two checkbox. Oh, I think I copy it like that. Okay, yeah, cool. So yeah, then I just have that handy so that when I need to put another one, like right here, I just go ahead and paste it. So then I can see here I need two of these. There they are. So I'm gonna again, I'm actually gonna leave this. Normally I would um, use the buffer exchange here and I would pull this stud out and I would indicate with an arrow here that it's going onto this bar piece. Uh, but it wouldn't really be clear uh, to the viewer, uh, where to make the the stop, you know, how far down the, the bar this should slide. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is for now. I'm actually going to make it a little bit larger here using the scale, um, just so it's, again, abundantly clear what's happening. The stud is sliding onto the bar. Uh, oh, and here we have our first mistake. So this, uh, this step is out of order. So it should be, um, yeah, it should be this uh, claw piece first, then this bracket, then this claw piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go uh, exit, and I'm on step 36. I'm gonna go ahead and exit uh, back to my model. And then I'm going to go into my submodel here for the foot, I'm gonna view it. I'll have to make this change for both because I, since I mirrored it, uh, the mistake will be apparent in both models. So take a look here at the step order. So I have my plate and bar, and then I have my bracket, and then I have my plates modified. So that's not what I want. I want this plate here to come first. So I'm going to then drag that up into this first step. And then I want to create a new step right in here. So this is a new blank step, and I'm going to go ahead and drag the bracket down into that. So the new order of operations is the bar, let me just click on my glasses here so I can see the step order. The bar and the stud, the clip, the bracket, then the next clip there. So that works great. So let me go ahead and um, actually return to the main model for that. Um, now you see the, the leg is missing, that's because I had the step view on. And so it, it hid those items and it, and it um, <laughs> remembers that when you go out to the main model. So something to keep in mind. I just turn off the glasses and that went away. again. So I'm going to create a new step three in here. Move the bracket down into that. Move this clip into step number two. So once again we have bar, clip, bracket, clip. Perfect. Okay, return to main model, hit save and go back to my instructions. Uh, so I left off on step 36, so if I just type that into this little um, thingy up here, this little uh, box, <laughs> I can jump right to that step. So now we can see we have the correct uh, order of operations. We have the uh, clip and then the bracket. So let me just go ahead and also just flip this around so that we can see when the bracket attaches, it's absolutely clear what is happening. And then we have that in there, that's all good. Let me now flip this the other way, so that, uh, let's see, is this the best view? Yeah, okay, this works. So we can see both parts that are being placed and how they're supposed to be oriented. I'm gonna align this to the previous view. That all looks good. And now, this is telling me, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, stand this part up so it's kind of the correct, oh my goodness, come on, oops. Two hours later. That way, there we go, okay.
So I just wanted to kind of line it up with the, uh, the step in here so we can see that there's the, the ankle uh, attachment that we haven't built yet, and that clips into this part right here. So I'm gonna move on to the next step. So now it's showing us we're gonna be building the foot. So then I have my uh, brackets, my cheese wedges, and then here I need to flip it to the other side that and then it shows here that this is clipping into the foot but I just want to show it from the underside so it's absolutely clear that that bar is going into these two clip parts right here I can delete that because we went from a group into the foot so we don't need to have that uh, logo and let's flip this model upside down you can see here I'm, I'm speeding up because I'm just sort of getting into my groove and this that's how a lot of times this works. Um, you start to really find a rhythm and then it goes fairly quickly until you hit a problem stage like this one. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to just see what's a decent angle to see what's happening here. So let's try... Nope, that's not what I want to do. 90 like I had before here yeah okay so I, I just want it again to the the important part is that the leg is clipping into these uh, clips right here to this assembly and showing that connection point is what matters to me most so that's that oh, let me go ahead and delete this okay and then we have the bar clip oh let me um, reset this so I went um, what what I call off-axis um, and that offset continues until you reset it. So here you can see now everything is straight and lined up again. That's how we want it to be. Put my bracket, put my clip, put my clip tile, and then again I'm going to flip this upside down like so. And then just align this to the previous step, and then flip this the other way. And it was. Uh, it was crazy how it just got stuck last time, huh? That was, <laughs> that was wild. Um, okay, and then I'm just going to flip this one around the other way because I'm going to be building on the front side of this for the time being. So we've got brackets, we've got cheese wedges, we've got our pistons, and then I just have to flip this around. And there we go. So let me once again get the view correct and lined up for this. Something about like that, I guess. Let me see here. Uh, maybe something in between this. Okay. Well, that's a little bit vague. Let me try adding in. Oh, that didn't make things better. Made things worse. Hmm. It's just such a, I wish I could just um, click and rotate this freely, but uh, alas, the instruction maker doesn't work that way. Um, let me see, try 30 here. Yeah, something about like that. Again, so we can just see that. Um, so I just want to delete this. We can just see that connection point very clearly there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my weird numbers here. And I'm going to. Well, since we already plugged one leg in, I feel like it should be fairly clear to the viewer that the second leg goes in, you know, right next to it. I think common sense and power of deduction would lead you to believe that, so I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, this is a little bit unclear to me, so I'm just going to rotate it around the other way. Then we have our slope, then we have our piston piece, which again is obscured, so I'll turn it around. And then that is, now it's telling us we're going to build the rest of the arm, so that's cool. So we have our clips and bars and brackets. Okay, and then this is trying to show the viewer that the uh, clip plugs into that arm piece. So again, I just want to make it as clear as humanly possible that that's what's happening by rotating it around to the correct viewing angle. Okay, we have our headlight brick and our clip. Again, that's not very clear, so let me go ahead and flip this around this way. We have our second plate and clip and bar. Okay, cool. 
So that plugs into the wrist. A OK. We have finger number one. And finger number two should be on the same step. So whoops, I went ahead and missed that out. So I'm on step 89. Just remembering that for later when I come back. Let me go ahead and go into this sub model right here, actually. Yeah, no, I, I do need to do view because I want to see the steps accurately here. So finger one and finger two. That's not what I okay, cool. So let's go together. And this is something that really helps um, folks in their building because a lot of people uh, really don't like repetitive building and they want to know ahead of time that there's going to be uh, two steps so that they can build them concurrently and if they don't have that uh, some people would get genuinely annoyed <laughs> and uh, frustrated so I always like to make sure that whenever there's the opportunity to do a, a times two I'll click right here and skip to step 18 mm -hmm. Uh, whenever there's the opportunity to let folks know that, I try to do so. Okay. So we can see now that um, times two has been added. And then I think I should still be able to paste. That's correct. Right. Uh, extra warning in there. So now we have two fingers in there like that. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm just going to rotate this around to try to get a better angle on the arm and where exactly plugs in. This works pretty well. Uh, now I'm having a little bit of an annoying issue right now. Let me try to align this to the center. Uh, where that bounding box was just coming too close to the edge and it, it wasn't letting me place it there, so I just did the manual align to st uh, step center and that worked pretty well. Let me go next here. I'm going to go ahead and flip this part around because it's just clearer that way. Should have done rotate it once more. That way works better. Okay, cool. And then once again flip it here. So this this needed to be um, you know this couldn't be a plus or a times two because it's a mirrored build. You know it goes on the other side, so it needs to have its own set of instructions. Unfortunately, it's just how that works. It makes everything a big pain. <laughs> It'd be nice if you could just say. Uh, build this in reverse and then let the folks figure it out but that's not what instructions are for it's there to be as clear and readable as possible so that is my goal always with these things so here I have another one these needs to flip around the other way um, and you can actually turn off the uh, generation of these little flip the model around symbols um, you can actually switch that off and you can just add them manually by going to insert flip um, but then you have to do that every single time you flip the model and a lot of times I forget so I find that it's better to have them appear automatically and then delete them when I don't want them like in this instance because uh, otherwise it will forget and the model will start flipping in the middle of the instructions and uh, people won't know why <laughs> because there's no indication to flip the model um, okay, so we're going to build up our fingers again here, times two. Ah, uh, it didn't take. It didn't take. I thought I... Hmm, that's frustrating. Okay, let me go back out once again. And then... I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I'm just doing it uh, in a foolish manner. But, yeah, finger mirrored, finger mirrored. Hmm. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to copy this one right here so we can make sure that it's reading this as a clone or a copy of itself. Something about that went wrong. I don't really understand uh, what that was, but let me try to go back again. Uh, let me also just double check this one to make sure I did that correctly. So, yeah, those, those are correct. Okay, let's see. So we're going to page design, step 111 I believe it was, and yes, okay, we have our times two now, something for whatever reason that, that didn't like, uh, it didn't like having that naming scheme of the, the mirrored uh, in there, and it was reading it as two separate sub-assemblies instead of two of the same thing, so fix that. Um, it's a new one I've never encountered before. 
Uh, so again, now that the arm is attached on this side, I feel like we can just let the viewer figure out that that goes right there. Seems pretty clear to me. So we're gonna have, let me, let me rotate this around. So I'm gonna scroll down so I can see the preceding steps here. And I'm just going to rotate this. Um, maybe give it like, oops. Maybe give it like a little bit of rotation here just so that these steps that are coming next uh, line up a little bit more straight because um, this whole assembly is kind of sitting in an angle and it can be kind of confusing to try to build that way. So, um, oh, this is actually a handy thing too. When you, you see right here that there's a ghosted version of the previous instruction step, that's just to show you where that is. So you can just manually line it up with the previous step, which is really, really handy. Sometimes you just don't feel like right clicking and hitting align to previous step center every single time. So you can just kind of quickly drag it into place, and that's a really cool thing. Um, actually, I want to keep that. Okay, so yeah, so you can do it you know, this way, but as you can see, sometimes you have to click multiple times. Uh, it can be a little bit clunky, um, or you can just drag it manually. So um, we have another two sub-assemblies in here. Um, I believe this is just a single step so I don't need an extra times two because, you know, there's already one right here. I'm going to do the buffer exchange here for this, and I'm going to pull this out and just uh, make sure that for those folks who aren't familiar with these particular parts, maybe haven't uh, encountered them before, that they know exactly what they're looking at with these two that go one into the other. So then we have our two here connected. There we go. And then we'll just finish up the roll cage with this little flame uh, emitter thingy assembly here. Very technical term there, flame emitter thingy assembly. And then I'm going to go ahead and do just zero out this rotation so that it kind of resets to the default Lego view. Uh, and we can see there that the roll cage connects at the top, so that is clear as can be. Uh, so this, okay, this is something we haven't encountered before. What happens when your um, <laughs> instruction box of what to apply is way, way, way too big and in the way? You can scale it down by clicking on it using the scale slider here. And then also I'm going to change the orientation of this step. And um, later on, not, uh, not in this video, but later on, I will go and take a photo of this model and I'll uh, show exactly where the strings should be going. Uh, and that'll just make that a lot clearer because yeah, currently it's uh, extremely baffling <laughs> to look at. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then go on to the next part right here, which is, let me flip this around to the other side. Just the final part here, securing those strings in place. And that's the last step. So if you want to add a page, you can go ahead and add a page here and you could put, for example, a nice render, uh, or you can add the uh, a list of the parts that were used. So you uh, do insert um, bill of materials, like so, and then it'll just generate a list and it'll just give you, it's um, displaying very weirdly right here. Not sure why it's, doing that. Oh, I think the string piece is throwing it off. Okay, wait, let me, let me try to get this just right. Will that, if I drag this out a little bit? Okay. <laughs> I just want to not have that final row right there. Okay, this one. So, uh, yeah, it'll give you the bill of materials here that goes into the end. Uh, we don't need this page. Um, that was the one that I was saying you could do a little render if you wanted to. Um, but that's really all you need, so everybody can kind of reference and make sure that when they get their parts in the mail, uh, they have everything that they need and they can compare it to this list because it just gives you an itemized breakdown of everything that's in the set, and that's very handy. So uh, I've started to include those um, with my more recent instructions, and I think that that's a really helpful thing to do. So the only thing left to do is to export um, the instructions, which you can do here. Um, I usually leave all pages selected because I don't see, there's never really a reason for me to export part of it. Uh, do it as a PDF size, uh, as size number one, that's fine. And then you can just call it, uh, I'll call it, oops, I'm to do that. Uh, power loader instructions. 
Uh, and then you just hit export and you wait until it's done. Uh, so that's that. I mean, you got the full rundown there. Sorry, I'm just cracking my knuckles after that long process. Um, you kind of got a, a full scope look at the whole process there, including some weird stuff like working with the, uh, the string, the flexible parts. It's very uh, specific use case. Um, probably not going to come up too often in your builds, uh, but I just wanted to include that section for you there because it is, uh, again, a very weird, intimidating thing to look at when you start playing around with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is that is the process, I mean, in a nutshell, uh, aside from, like in the case of wanting to take a photo here of, of this one step, typically that's how I make my instructions and um, and that's what goes into it. And this this model is relatively small, it's a few hundred pieces, but um, you can imagine when I'm doing something like, say, um, Hogwarts Castle or, you know, a Millennium Falcon, uh, it takes a while. Uh, it's it's not the smoothest process and the software isn't the most reliable thing ever. So uh, it, it does get a little bit uh, stressful sometimes <laughs> making these, honestly. Um, and the fact that the uh, that the, the software kind of stutters more and more as you get uh, more pieces down is definitely not helpful. So that's again, that's another thing that I hope eventually is going to be ironed out of the software that it, it performs better with higher uh, piece counts. But I understand it's it's not easy to just have like a bajillion parts uh, on screen, and uh, the software is working hard behind the scenes to make things happen. So I get it. Um, but yeah, that's about that. So. Uh, I really appreciate you guys for watching. I'm just waiting for this to be done here so we can uh, take a look at the finished result. There you go. So you get this little pop-up uh, window that says, would you like to be taken to the folder where it is at? So that is, uh, oh yeah, right here. So it's, look at all my instructions. Um, yeah, so power loader. Uh, just do a little preview of it here. So you can see all in there. Um, there's definitely more stuff that you can do, like um, I didn't cover uh, call-out stages, which is where instead of having a separate um, set of pages for a group, you just have a little kind of mini pop-up window on screen that shows you all the steps inside of it. Um, but I don't think that's essential. Like, for example, this, you know, you could have just a little window here that shows you the steps to build this all on the same page. Um, but I think this is clear enough and it works well for me and I, I like this format. I, I don't feel the need really to do that too often, so um, I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, so there you go. There is your, uh, your guide from start to finish on how to make instructions in uh, Studio and, um, and how to make models in Studio. So hopefully, if you guys are beginners uh, and you were looking for a guide to be able to do this, hopefully you guys got a kick out of this. So I'm going to see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.